Brady's pass is intercepted and returned for a touchdown by Logan Ryan, the former Patriot. The Titans take out the defending champions. I've always, uh, you know, tried to do the right thing out there. And, um, you know, who knows what the future holds, so we'll leave it at that. I guess on that same note, Tom, do you have a, a sense of whether you'll be back with the Patriots in 2020, and, and do you want to be back with the Patriots in 2020? I love the Patriots. I mean, they they, they obviously, uh, you know, they got a, it's the greatest organization, and, you know, playing for Mr. Kraft all these years, and uh, for Coach Belichick, I mean, there's, um, you know, there's nobody who's had a better career, I would say, than me, you know, just being with them. So I'm very blessed. I don't know what the future looks like, so, and I'm not going to predict it. So I wish we'd have won tonight and uh, wish we'd done a lot of things better over the course of the season, but we just didn't. Yeah, there you are. That's Tom Brady speaking after, well, shock defeat. New England Patriots involved at the wild card stage, which is a rarity in itself after they lost to the Dolphins last week, and then a big upset, losing 20 points to 13 against Tennessee. It ended, as you heard there, with Brady throwing a last-ditch interception and Brady refusing to confirm or deny where he's going to be next season. So it seems, amazingly, at 42, it's extraordinary it's um, gone on so long at, at such a high level that the Brady... Belichick Patriots era could be coming to a close. For more, let's go to the Boston Globe's Tara Sullivan. You're there, Tara? I'm here. How are you? Great. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining us. So maybe just sketch the Patriots season up, up until uh, the weekend, the wildcard weekend, because obviously things were not going well for quite some time. You're right. It was a, a strange season by Patriots standards because it started out and it felt like business as usual. They got off to such a great start, 8-0. No, and as we see now, though, looking back, a lot of the despite that record, a lot of the issues that were being brought up, problems on offense, problems scoring points, things like that, obviously were as big as we thought. And then the defensive side of the ball, where they were so dominant early, it became clear that that was more a product of who they'd been playing um, than, you know, than being as dominant as we thought they might be. Brady, as I understand it, has always been paid slightly less than other top-tier quarterbacks in order to clear salary cap space to allow the Patriots sign a stronger squad. So has that not happened in the offseason this year? No, it hasn't happened in the offseason this year because when they spoke last year heading into the final year of a contract, he really didn't want to do that again and chose to have this situation instead where the contract would expire. He'd become a free agent. And honestly, the one thing he asked in exchange for as well as that is for the Patriots not to be allowed or not to agree not to put what we call the franchise tag on him, where, you know, a team has the option of putting this tag on, which gives them exclusive rights to re-sign that player at the average salary of the top five players at that position. But Brady, clearly in his decision, wants this opportunity to be completely free and make up his mind. What about his form in the midst of this season? How has he been playing? Well, he's not as good as he was you know, a couple, even a couple of years ago. He is 42 years old, like he said. But in, in my opinion, he's not the reason that the offense struggled this year. I think Tom Brady, especially with a system that he knows very well and players around him that he's used to playing with, such as a Julian Edelman, I think Tom Brady is plenty good enough to still win a lot of football games. Hey, he won a lot this year, but to still have an offense better than this one. Um, he still, there were even a few throws, you know, in the game over the weekend that are among the best you'll see in any game. So, Maybe another year is all he has left, but I certainly think he has at least a year left. Okay. So you mentioned there he stipulated he wanted a change in his contract, effectively wanted mm -hmm. to be a free agent. Why now? I mean, so the, the lure of this for Brady or the motivation for Brady, because I would think there must be a certain appeal in being a one franchise man and being forever a legend. And I guess that will be the case regardless in Boston. But to not taint that at all, to just retire having only played for the Patriots for the last however many years. I would have thought that would have been a significant motivation and certainly not to go out after a season like this. Why does Brady want away? It's such a good question and it's it's not an easy place to put yourself inside Tom Brady's head. He's not one to share a lot of those innermost thoughts. I agree with you. It would be so strange to see him in another uniform and it would it would seem so strange for him to even want to do that. But I think there is some small element between him and the coach, Bill Belichick. There's always been this 
debate about which one is more responsible for all the success. And so I think there's a little bit of, hey, maybe I can go prove that I'm the reason. If I go and succeed somewhere else, I look like the reason that we had all the success. And the same from Belichick's perspective. Hey, I'm ready to move on from a 42-year-old quarterback who's going to cost me $25 million to have him play one more year where I'd rather use that money on other players. Mm. And I'm the reason that, you know, that I can show you I can win with somebody else. So there's a little bit of that at play. Um, however, the owner, Robert Kraft, has been very, very clear that he really wants Brady to retire only having played for the Patriots. So there really are a ton of elements mm. at work here in, in kind of finding a resolution. Because if that is in Brady's thinking... I'm going to show everybody I'm just fine without Bill Belichick. I'd certainly prefer to be doing that if I were him, age 32 and at the peak of my powers, because, you know, the 43-year-old off to a fresh franchise, I don't know if he's going to be sitting there come next February looking at Bill Belichick saying, see, I told you. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And the thought of having to learn a whole new system, and, you know, Brady is very big on chemistry with his, say, with his wide receivers. They all know what each other's doing, you know, and to have to start from scratch with that at this age, as you correctly point out, Perhaps if his offensive coordinator, who's um, going to interview with, with for one more job, I, I don't know, maybe if he followed somebody he knew. But to me, ultimately, the thing that obviously makes the most sense is for him to play one more year or two more years and to do it with the Patriots. So mm. we shall see, but it's not going to be easy to get to that finish line. How in demand would Tom Brady be elsewhere? <laughs> Hard to know. There's a lot of rumors about a couple of different places, say um, San Diego. You know, the Chargers are ready to move on from Phillip Rivers. But see that. So a lot of people say Brady's from California originally, and maybe that makes sense. But to me, if you're San Diego, if you already have a veteran quarterback who at least knows the system, why wouldn't you pay him the twenty five million and keep Phillip Rivers for one more year, you know, rather than trying it brand new with somebody else? So I don't really know where he could land Miami. You know, he has a former uh, Brian Flores, who's the head coach in Miami, used to work for the Patriots up until last year. Maybe that's a place. But they have a veteran there, Ryan Fitzpatrick. So I don't have an easy answer mm. for you where he might fit other than New England. So really, in some respects, and I'm presuming this isn't about money. I, I, Tom Brady has more than I mean, I think money. it's a little bit about money, but the pride that goes with money. Okay. Do you know how you were saying, like, having taken a little less than, say, the top guys? You know, Drew Brees made, his, made the money this year despite being – in his 40s as well, he still got, you know, a huge quarterback style contract. And Brady has many, many times, you know, made team friendly decisions so that, listen, it's benefited him by doing it because it's allowed for better players around him. Mm. And we saw that this year he didn't have enough good players around him to be able to win. Um, but you're right. It's not really about the money. I mean, Brady is so different than other players when it comes to the money. He's one of the only ones I, I'd venture to say the only one in the NFL whose wife dwarfs his salary you know she's an international supermodel and and she makes more than he does mm. so i don't think in and of itself money is the issue i just think it's more about the status that goes with what that money says right okay and to what extent then is there speculation that really this is just down to the relationship he has with bill belichick it always seems like a nuanced complicated <laughs> relationship i mean we heard the clip of brady when we were just about yeah. to bring you on there and he did make a point of saying he's had a wonderful career he mentions uh, Mr. Kraft, Kraft, and then first. he mentions yeah. the brilliant coach, Mr. Belichick, as well. And in any quotes I've seen over the last couple of days, it's not like there's been a glaring omission of Bill Belichick in his comments. And yet it never seems as warm and perfect a relationship as it should be, given what they've achieved together. So do we know, for instance, I, for, I mean, I'm looking for a logic here that I still can't see with Brady. Maybe Bill Je Belichick has told him one way or another, listen, you're, you're, this is your last year with me. Uh, like, I can't keep starting you. I mean, do we, do we know what's going on there? No, we don't know fully. And, and there have been many reports over the years hitting kind of um, a crescendo two years ago where it really seemed there was a lot of, um, rancor among the big three, if you will, Kraft, Belichick, and Brady. Because, you know, if you look back, they had drafted a quarterback behind Brady a few years ago. Was it Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah. who's now starting for the top seed in the NFC for the San Francisco 49ers? That still doesn't sit well with Bill Belichick because he thought he had his next guy and he was forced to kind of get rid of him because they were sticking with Brady. Now, it's impossible to argue with the result. They've won two Super Bowls since. So to me, it says it's the right decision, but it does leave the Patriots in this place where they're kind of stuck whether or not they stick with him for another year. That relationship between them is the most fascinating and at the same time the most difficult to interpret because for every time Bill says good things like on 
Sunday, the day after they lost, you know, I have great respect for Tom Brady. He's an icon in this franchise. He makes sure to say, you know, but negotiations are are not a one-way street and one person can't determine what everybody else does. So he always, to me, seems to have a, a, a counterbalance when it comes to to Brady and how great how great Brady is. Purely when it comes to just the business of football, because he, you know, he makes so many of the personnel decisions also. Mm. And what's Robert Kraft's role in this dynamic, or where do his loyalties <laughs> lie? Well, with Brady, 100%. I mean, he loves Brady. He talks about him like a family member, a son. But I think his ultimate goal right now is is just please don't blame me if this doesn't work out. You know, because he's made it clear. He spoke to a reporter named Peter King. Um, uh, well known here in this country, covering the football, covering the NFL for you know the better part of 40 years, and he spoke to Peter King and said, you know that Tom, he kind of put it on Tom. Tom wanted this opportunity to be a free agent, and I felt after all the years with us and after all he'd done that he deserved that chance. So mm. he was sort of shifting the onus, I thought, to Brady by saying that. And at the so the secret, you know, or the underlying message is, please don't blame me if he's not here. Mm. Um, but that being said, I think Kraft of course, in a perfect world, even more so than Belichick, would just love for Brady to finish his career here. Yeah. So, or if Brady were ready to retire. You know, that would be perfect for, for Robert Kraft. But Brady's not ready to retire. He just, and it's, that's one of those things where I find it difficult to ever say a guy should or shouldn't retire unless there's, you know, a head injury thing at stake. But mm. it's hard to tell somebody else when to hang up their cleats. So um, Brady has made it pretty clear he has no desire to retire. And so, Tara, I appreciate we're into speculation here, but I mean, if you're if you're hanging out at the Boston Globe newsroom and people are chatting about the Patriots, as I suspect they do every day, nonstop, what's the common consensus on why Brady wants away? Is it to get away from Belichick? Is that the one most people come across? Well, yeah, I don't know that I'd even say there's a common consensus. He wants to get away. Okay. It's that he wants to kind of test the waters, maybe, or just just have the freedom to make that decision. Um, I do think in a perfect world, I also think he wants to be back. I just don't think it makes sense to be anywhere else. But but yeah, after 20 years, you know, I wrote this two years ago. I remember coming in and there was, like I said, a lot of reports that there were issues among them. Sometimes it's easy to say, you know, oh my God, they're not getting along. But, but the flip side is we should probably marvel at how well they have gotten along for mm. 20 years. Think of any three major you know, egos and, and people at the top of their profession, meaning Kraft, Belichick, Brady, at, you know, and all of them sort of getting along for as long as they have. So uh, maybe he's just tired of it. I don't know that the family loves living on the East Coast. They're West Coast people. You know, his wife, Giselle Bunchen, as we said, is a model. I'm sure she'd prefer to live in California, near L.A., different types of things. You know, so there could be a lot of things at stake that we're not even mm. privy to when it comes to Brady. And how far are the Patriots away from returning to, I mean, I'm talking former glories as if it's a long time ago. I mean, I presume, I I presume this, you know, the famine, uh, I presume this thing could be sorted out relatively quickly. I don't know. They do have a lot of issues. They do. I mean, they have a lot of different free agents, key players in different spots that may or may not be back. I could tell you, you know, a Devin McCourty, um, a Matthew Slater, these guys are team captains and leaders and have been there for a long time. They clearly had um, troubles along the offensive line, which is a big deal. It's the it's the trenches, and it's where where the protection happens, and it's what allows the offense to operate. And they need more playmakers. They missed the likes of Rob Gronkowski or Danny Amendola, people who've been there in the past. And you know, they tried finding solutions this year. They signed Antonio Brown, who they had to release after he got himself in trouble. And you know, so I don't. In some ways, they do look close. They play in a division that's very, very winnable. They've won it 11 years in a row, and that guarantees your, your spot in the playoffs. But they do have issues. And what about the perception of Brady across America? Because we are, we are talking about a living legend, not just a living legend, but someone who's actively <laughs> playing as well. And the whole Brady, Belichick, Kraft, general hatred of the empire, Spygate, Deflategate, and just yeah. success, obviously. Is Brady at this stage in his career, or maybe, maybe this was always the case, I don't know, and I presume it depends what pockets of the country you go to, but has there been any element of Brady over the last year or two years being on something of a, a valedictory lap of honour where he is almost in every stadium receiving applause and acclaim, or what is his standing? Is, is he a beloved figure no, it, in American it has, sports? it has never really reached that point, like any sort of farewell tour or... When he gets cheered in other stadiums, it's usually because Patriot fans actually travel pretty well, and they tend to have large pockets of fans. Um, I used to work in the New York market until two years ago or two and a half years ago, and I can tell you, I mean, Brady is respected in most places. Other, you know, I'm sure there are some who think the Patriots 
cheated a lot or whatever. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not as big a believer in that. I think Brady is respected. He's certainly not beloved anywhere but in New England. Right. I mean, it's more of a respect factor elsewhere. Because, you know, like any team when it's so dominant, the rest of the country, you look at those heat maps, you know, when it's the Super Bowl and the Patriots are in it, everywhere but New England, the rest of the country is rooting for whoever is playing the Patriots. I mean, they are definitely public enemy number one anywhere outside of their home fan base just because people are tired of seeing them win all the time. Okay. What about Bill Belichick then at 67? Is this guy <laughs> going to be around for another 20, 30, 40 years? Uh, where, where is he? Yeah, I mean, he's shown no desire to slow down. And I think, you know, he's second all time behind um, Don Shula, who's the very famous coach who used to coach the Miami Dolphins and um, in career victories. And I think that record matters a lot to him. Um, I think he... It's actually Brady who once described it as as um, Belichick's competitive energy is relentless, and that meaning that like he just that desire to compete and do the job and do what it takes to compete at the highest level doesn't wane at all. So the other part, you know, Brady uh, Belichick has two of his sons working for him now. One of one of them is a coach who's with him every day and did a lot with the defense this year, and the other works in the building as well. And I think he's enjoying that part of it. He doesn't talk about it much, but I think it means an awful lot to him. And I don't think there's any any slowdown for him. I think he wants to keep coaching for a while. Right, okay. And is he still regarded very much as a man at the peak yeah. of his powers? Absolutely. I don't think there's... I mean, he. you know, there's always going to be something you could pick on from a game plan or something. But no, um, every time I meet a player who, say, has come to the Patriots from another team, they, they marvel at kind of the attention to detail and how it's different with the Patriots than it is with other teams. So I think you have to credit Belichick for sort of a, a program that is in place and just works. It definitely works, mm. and, and players, um, they know what to expect, and the accountability is high, and uh, I think he is still considered the best coach in the NFL. Really, that's extraordinary, considering how much the game changes. Even the position of quarterback, if we're talking about Brady, you know, his approach is almost Absolutely. quaint compared to the Lamar Jackson <laughs> The Lamar Jacksons now. of the world. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. But I that, promise you, if, yeah. if the Patriots drafted a Lamar Jackson, Belichick would figure out how to use him. And do we know how Belichick has managed to keep up with all the changes in the game? Does he change his uh, staff very much? Does I mean, is it just he's got a keen instinct for the game? Is he a student of the I game? I think it's, it's, it's him primarily. I mean, the amount of work he does in studying and, and he just loves the game. He would watch every game that everybody else plays in addition to his own games. And mm. he spends the offseason, you know, scouting the entire game and, He's not afraid to use analytics and look for trends that are statistical as opposed to physical. He's, you know, he's kind of open to anything um, while maintaining his core beliefs about the game and, and what they might be. I, I just think he's, he's shown more than anybody that he can adapt, as you said, different, you know, mm. different types of, well, he's had the same quarterback for 20 years, but, but I do think he can adapt um, within the game as well. I, th I think he's extraordinary. Has Belichick ever been lured away or tempted away? Not that we're really aware of. There were always calls in these last 20 years. Anytime there was any hint of maybe dissatisfaction, the Giants franchise would sort of pop up and the rumors would start, could we, could we ever pry Belichick away? Because he had coached the Jets in New York or was supposed to coach the Jets and then left after taking the, the job for a day to go to New England. Um it's sort of a famous weird story in his background where he resigned. He left a note resigning as HC of the NYJ, um, meaning head coach of the New York Jets. It's sort of a weird blip, but obviously it worked out for him in New England. So that's really even the only one is sometimes people say, oh, because he, he won Super Bowls as an assistant coach with the Giants and has a very um, long and deep history with their ownership group, the Maras. So mm. there's been some speculation, but I don't see it happening. What, what Bill believes so strongly in is building – a program, not just a team for one season, but a program, you know, for years to, to last for years and from top to bottom. And that's what he has in New England. And for him at his age to start that somewhere else just makes zero sense to me. Mm. Much like a 42-year-old moving to a different franchise. but <laughs> Indeed, well said. <laughs> here we are. So I guess maybe before you leave us, um, Tara, maybe just paint the scene for the playoffs now and how they're shaping up without the Patriots for once. Well, it's, it's a strange time here because it's without the Patriots and then the New Orleans Saints losing also and Drew Brees. Like, those were sort of the two. They both have moved into one and two in career passing yards all time, and they're the elder statesmen, and they're out. So it's definitely about next gen. You know, it's about who's the next one who's going to step in, um, whether it is Lamar Jackson or Garoppolo or Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. And I think it's a very exciting playoff because of that. I think there's a lot of just 
interest in the game to see which of these young quarterbacks might take that leap and, um, you know, that style quarterback might win a Super Bowl. And is it still relatively open at this stage? Oh, yeah, I would say so because, uh, well, I mean, the favorites are the favorites. This, you know, San Francisco has a great combination of offense and defense and they get to play at home. Um, so I think that, and then Baltimore to me has been, they really emerged a mid season game. If you saw it when they really, really handled the Patriots with ease at home, that was kind of the eye opener for all of us that, um, they really have, they are clicking and it hasn't slowed down. You know, they really haven't had a hiccup since. So if they can keep their momentum going, I think Baltimore is the clear favorite, but there are plenty of, you know, maybe the Kansas city and San Francisco are certainly contenders. Okay. So when will this Brady stuff be resolved? I don't suppose there'll be a pro, uh, the decision <laughs> program airing on uh, TV anytime soon. As, <laughs> as, as, only, as if only out. they'd stand up and tell us what they were thinking. Um, no, I don't, I, I honestly don't know the new league year. Um, I believe that's, February. So they have to kind of figure out, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the date off the top of my head, but you know, within the next month, I mean, we should have some clarity. Uh, I don't think it'll happen throughout these playoffs. You know, the, the NFL tends to want you to focus on the playoffs and not all these coaching searches and sure. free agent things. So, um, sometime after the Super Bowl, I think this even heats up a little more. Okay. Well, listen, I'm sure we might check in then when Boston will be in mourning if uh, the news comes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll bring you scenes from the funeral at Gillette Stadium. Yeah, no doubt. Tara Sullivan, Boston Globe. Thanks so much, Tara. Thank you. Cheers. That's Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe on what seems like the imminent departure of Tom Brady. It is at Old Trafford, 23 minutes on the clock. Manchester United nil, Manchester City 1. We'll bring you details of that goal in just one sec.